Hey everyone, in this video we are going to talk about solving departmental silos. So an information silo, or sometimes a departmental silo, but in general an information silo is when data are isolated in separate information systems. They're stored in separate databases. So in one organization, maybe sales and marketing has a separate database from accounting, has a separate database from operations, which has a separate database from human resources, and so on and so forth. When those databases are completely separate with no interaction between any other department, that would be what's known as an information silo. Now, we talked about this uh, example work group um, and worker processes diagram before. And if you look through all of the example processes in every single work group right here, and I'll give you a second if you want to pause and refresh yourself over what these different processes are, what you might notice is that all of these processes, or at least all of these work groups, in some way use uh, customer data. So all of these work groups would benefit from having a shared uh, database of customer data or sales data or all that kind of stuff. They would all benefit from sharing a database that has information about all of the sales that this uh, particular company is making. And I'm hoping that through the course of this video, I will motivate that and talk about why it is indeed important. But if all of the work groups within this company are information silos or department silos, uh, sales and marketing would have its own database containing all the customers that they've been talking to and so on. Uh, Operations would have their own database talking about all the orders that have been made. Manufacturing would have its own database uh, with inventory and all that kind of stuff. And you might notice that they're already in just those three uh, things that I talked about. There are some overlaps in information right here. Um, for example, with operations and sales and marketing, they're both uh, involved in the customers of this business. So they both need information on customers of this business. Um, sales forecasting right here uh, could be really useful if it's motivated by information about the orders that are being placed from the company. If they can use previous uh, sales in order to try to forecast future sales. So uh, both sales and marketing and operations, it would be really helpful if they also have information about the orders that are being made by the, uh, by the customers from the company. Manufacturing right here, they have this inventory stuff and, you know, they're planning, scheduling operations, all that stuff. But the inventory is going to be extremely useful for things like sales. Um, where the sales and marketing team will have to know how many of a particular product that they have so that they can keep on trying to sell it, so that they can keep on trying to market it, all that kind of stuff. So within these three departments, there's a lot of uh, connections between the data that they are trying to hold. And if they have their own separate databases, uh, you might notice that there is a lot of repeated information. It would be a lot of repeated information because, you know, they both have separate databases. Neither of them share anything from each other's database. So they have to have all of the, all of the information that they need contained within their own database. Now they might be passing data back and forth between each other depending on who's collecting what kind of data, but in the end one database has a lot of information 
another database has a lot of information and some of that information might be the same. There might be an intersection between the information contained in each database. For example, with manufacturing and sales, the intersection might be the inventory in terms of like what products are there and how many of those products are in inventory. So that actually touches, touches on one of the problems of the information silos that I'm about to get into. So with information silos, there are a number of problems that come out of them. Uh, it can be problematic for departments to be information silos. One of them that I just started talking about is that data are duplicated between multiple databases. Now, this isn't just a problem in terms of the fact that these different databases have redundant information and are therefore taking up more space. I mean, that can be a problem depending on the size of the company, the size of the databases, size of the data itself that is duplicated and the amount that it's costing them to store all of that redundant data. That may or may not be a problem. The bigger problem is that it can lead to data inconsistency, which would be a data integrity problem. And what I mean by that is if, let's say in our hypothetical business, if the sales team and the inventory team both have information on how many of each product are in stock and the inventory team realizes that uh, they've just run out of a particular product and they set that product's inventory count to be zero on their database and they happen to forget to share that data over to sales. That would be data inconsistency because data uh, sales has a non-zero um, number of products of that particular product on their books so they can continue trying to sell it only for prospective customers to come and try to order it and realize, oh, there, there aren't actually any more. Why were we uh, advertised to this hard about this product that is just out of stock? And that's maybe one of the less bad examples. This also means that business processes are disjointed. So any business process that one particular department might want to do uh, that relies on the, uh, a piece of data from their own database would be disjointed from another department trying to do something regarding the uh, same piece of data, but from their own database and communication between those departments that they actually need to do communication for their business processes, that's going to be a little bit longer. So if they are trying to both do something based on the same figure in their databases, but they also need to communicate in that same activity, then their communication to uh, actually do, you know, whatever, whatever that might be, you know, checking the values to make sure everything's good or communicating stuff regarding those values or whatever, that might be, um, that might not work out so well. It might take longer, it might lead to errors, all that kind of stuff. And I'll, I'll try to get through some examples in the next uh, sort of part of this video, but I'm just going through the problems right now. So the processes themselves are disjointed, unlike where if everyone was kind of sharing information from the same database, uh, if, they were, if they had all the same data from the same database and it was all updated and presented to them, you know, the, only the person they need are presented to them, of course, but it's all based on the same database or something like that. Uh, if they're not an information silo, then that communication might be able to happen a lot faster. Then you have the lack of int integrated uh, enterprise information. So you might not be able to make, uh, answer questions regarding the entire business. For example, if a particular customer is a preferred customer, if you don't have all of the same data, if all of that data isn't completely integrated together. Uh, again, a little more in some examples coming up in the future. 
there might be some inefficiency as a result of this lack of uh, integrated enterprise information or the disjointed business processes. So the lack of enterprise information, if you're trying to make a um, overall uh, sort of piece of knowledge about a customer based on a lot of different aspects of interactions from uh, all these different departments, or if you're trying to inform strategic goals or stuff like that, right? Um, this trying to get everyone on the same page when they don't have the same data can lead to quite a bit of inefficiency. And then finally, everything sums up to all of this being increased cost for the organization. So these departmental silos will cost an organization more. All the inefficiency, the waste of time, waste of resources, loss of customers, all of that possible stuff could cost the organization more money. Here's that example that I talked about before. We have an example company right here. Um, where all their departments are uh, information silos. So for example, the data duplication and data inconsistency side of thing, right? Uh, if a customer has uh, updated their address from Buffalo, New York to Reno, Nevada, and sales and marketing is able to get this right, you know, they, they're the ones in contact with this company, so they're able to figure that out. and they have to manually send everything over to accounting to get everything updated. As you can see right here, there is a mistake where accounting uh, did not update the billing address. They only updated the ship to address right here. So this inconsistency is because of the fact that they had to manually send data over. They had to manually share data as opposed to just having a shared database where sales and marketing could update that database and then accounting could see the changes when they actually need to bill this customer. Now this disjointed processes right here uh, stems from, in this case, this is a sales and marketing and accounting still trying to get in communication um, with the disjointed processes, right? Sales and marketing is trying to approve a $20,000 order with a company uh, and in their database sales and marketing says that that company has a current balance of $17,800 so they are requesting $37,800 uh, of credit in order to help that order go through for the company. Accountings uh, on accounting side they actually see that the um, company has a balance of 12,300 because uh, you know, the company had returned a whole bunch of product before and they credited that company with uh, 5,500. So they took that off of the balance and the company actually owes 12,300. So when sales and marketing um, is trying to get this $20,000 order in and they request 37,800, to account for the cost of the order and the current balance, uh, accounting corrects it and approves the um, order and actual correct current balance of thirty-two thousand three hundred. And then sales and marketing is like, hey, you know, they they spend time being like, hey, what's going on? Why didn't you um, actually uh, give us the amount that we requested, and that's going to take a lot of time. But the processes are disjointed here because as the sales and marketing process is disjointed from the accounting process. They only have that, like, uh, it's completely disjointed for how they collect the information of, you know, what a company's balance happens to be and how they determine what credit they are trying to get for that company. Uh, accounting's process for actually updating that balance, getting information from the client and updating that balance and all that kind of stuff is going to be different than sales and marketing's uh, 
process of getting that balance from the database, uh, which in this case hasn't been correctly updated, and then trying to get that credit. So the processes are disjointed. They're happening disconnected from each other. And then this like one line of communication is how they get the update rather than everything being updated automatically. And if everything was updated automatically, as in if this wasn't an information silo, then you wouldn't have this disjointed process problem here. Now the limited information and lack of integrated information, that's the uh, lack of integrated enterprise information I was talking about before. Um, and here, you know, we have this question from sales and marketing is, uh, this company called IndyMac a preferred customer. Now they can tell that, you know, maybe IndyMac has been ordering a lot. They've been ordering a lot of products, um, racking up a whole lot of, uh, you know, credit on that balance, right? fairly large balance there, but they don't know whether or not that company is actually paying off their balance. They don't know any of the details of that that accounting has because in this case, the sales and marketing database does not have payment information in it and vice versa. So they're not able to tell if this company IndyMac is a preferred customer all they know is that IndyMac keeps on ordering from them. And this question of, is it a preferred customer is really important because they need to know whether or not they should keep on marketing towards IndyMac, right? Uh, if this company keeps on ordering from them and keeps on not paying, then why waste the time marketing towards them? Especially if the other departments in the business know that this company is actually not good to work with. Now, the organizational inefficiencies part right here, you have this redouble sales efforts at IndyMac, one West has been slow to pay. This is, uh, by the way, the example that the textbook uses in 8-3, uh, one of the sections within. Um, and in this example, uh, IndyMac foreclosed and was bought out by another company called One West, and One West took on IndyMac's uh, balance with the company and one west has been really really slow to pay so accounting would probably say hey you know maybe one west would not be the best customer to work with because they are very slow to pay you know they have all that information specifically because one west has to update all the payment information and whatnot uh indymac on the other or sorry the sales department on the other hand sales and marketing they don't know about any of this they still think that indymac uh is the company that they've been working with and IndyMac has been buying a lot. So they're going to uh, put more time and energy into selling uh, IndyMac stuff, trying to get IndyMac people at IndyMac to buy things from their company. Uh, and they're going to waste a lot of time because they need to figure out essentially the hard way that IndyMac no longer exists, that it's been bought out and that One West has been relatively slow to pay. They might not even find out One West has been slow to pay until that's too late. And someone at accounting yells at them to say, hey, One West is, keeps on racking up stuff. Stop uh, selling them things. So that lack of integration and that lack of uh, shared data right there means that the sales and marketing team are going to waste a lot of time. And the possibly accounting will waste some time too because they have to keep on tracking down uh, One West to pay and increasing, ever increasing balance and also talk to sales and marketing to make them stop uh, marketing to One West. So that is the inefficiencies that we're talking about here. And then of course, all of this leads to an increased expense, especially because time is money. That's uh, wasting resources, that's wasting time, uh, and that's possibly sales lost from other companies because they're focusing on a company that might not be willing or able to pay. So that's just an example of the problems that can arise from information silos. Now we can solve information silos by integrating data into a single database and revise all of our applications and processes to use that database so that there are 
there is a lot more communication between all of the departments. We don't have that disjointed data and we don't have all of the resulting problems that kind of cascade from this resulting disjointed data. So it's really good, if at all possible, to do that integration of data. You know, it will take some time to merge everything into one database to manage all the permissions and to revise all the applications and processes to use that integrated database. But in the end, it will probably be worth it. That being said, it may not be possible, especially for working with structured processes right here. It's very hard to change all of these because you have to essentially make new documentation, you know, up update all the old procedures to work with this new setup. And then you have to possibly retrain a whole bunch of people so that they're using the correct database and doing everything correctly and safely so that data isn't messed up and all that kind of stuff. Um, not to mention the addition of, uh, you know, possibly new pieces of software or uh, systems that work with the database in order to manage this different database. Like a lot of changes could happen and it could be really tricky to do, if not completely impossible to do. And in that case, you have to allow the isolation for, or that comes with information silos. You have to allow that isolated data, but you have to manage that isolation in order to avoid problems. You have to make sure that um, there are procedures to make all of those uh, separate databases within the departmental silos updated. If one database updates, everything has to be updated in a timely manner before data inc inconsistencies can cause problems. So you have to be very stringent about that, about this management of isolation. Now, the good thing about solving information silos is that it allows for linkages among processes because we have all of these different processes that are interacting with each other. For example, uh, things like inventory control and sales and marketing uh, could have linkages in terms of when, you know, let, let's say if you do integrate the database and everyone has all of the data in one place where they can access everything they need and everything is updated, right? If inventory updates their stock so that a particular product is no longer in stock, then sales and marketing might be able to get notified immediately, hey, this is out of stock, stop selling it. So linkages like that, the connections between different processes are really important and they're going to be really helpful to reduce things like inefficiency and they'll just end up improving the quality of processes. They'll make for more efficient processes because you can have these linkages providing immediate information that can uh, reduce wasted time and resources. So it's very helpful. All right, well, that is solving departmental silos. Um, that's how we use uh, information systems in order to solve departmental silos. So. The next thing we'll talk about is information systems on an enterprise level, the three different types of information systems that enterprises can use in order to, um, in, in order to, well, benefit enterprise level processes.